We're pitting our choice for best jet of 2022 against the newest jet of 2023. The winner might surprise you. Come join us on Discord and chat with us about it. The link is in the description. Comparing any two aircraft will require comparing the ground roll and rotation of both of them first. Rafal's ground roll requires an average of 6 seconds before it can rotate and get airborne. Eurofighter, by comparison, averages a 4 second ground roll before rotation. There is a significant difference between the two jets here. Two more seconds can mean running off of a short runway and crashing at high speed, wrecking your model. Keep this in mind if you are considering Rafal as an option. Landing is another aspect to consider. Since both jets are Death Doritos, aka Delta Wings, they both land with a high alpha nose up approach. Throttle is used to control your sink rate, while elevator is used to determine your glide path. Rudder is used to steer and keep the plane tracking straight. Both jets excel at landing, but Eurofighter is far less likely to bounce on pavement even with a smooth landing. Neither jet is really better than the other one here. This is largely a matter of personal preference. They're both very stable on the approach and will both occasionally exhibit a bit of wing rock if you push the nose up too much and get too slow. Aside from that, they're very well matched up here. Which leads us directly to high alpha performance. Both jets excel at high alpha. Eurofighter can get its nose up a little bit more because of the canard placement being so far forward. The canards move much more than Rafal, while Rafal is more likely to lose yaw stability and begin yawing in one direction if it stalls out. They both perform very similar in high alpha configuration as well. There is no clear winner in this category. Performance between the two jets is similar, except that the center of gravity can be pushed further back on Rafal without adding tail weight. This, coupled with full span elevons, results in spectacular backflips. Eurofighter is no slouch, but it just doesn't have the center of gravity or the control surface area needed to make it slide like Rafal. When it comes to barrel rolling, the Rafal is great at it and even slides around the roll. Eurofighter does a tighter roll and slides too. It's awesome to behold. They're both similar and there's no clear winner in terms of barrel rolling here. Which jet is better? We think it'll be up to personal preference in the end. What you like and how you prefer to fly will determine what jet you think is better. But here's four uncut flights comparing both jets that might help you make a decision. Today we have the free wing Eurofighter versus the FMS Rafal. 90 millimeter versus 80 millimeter. Let's find out which one is better. In terms of ground handling, I tell you right now, the Rafal is already better than the two. <laughs> Between the two, Rafal turns on a dime. Look at this thing. So good. Rafal is also very, very agile. We are flying this one on an SMC 4400 pack. Let's take her up. Gotta be careful because it's almost tail heavy right now. You can see the way it launches up into the sky. It's almost tail heavy. This is one of, if not the favorite jet of my particular uh, opinions. Not that that made any sense. It's one of my favorite jets. And the reason why is check this out. The way it kind of flips around. So cool. So agile, so easy to fly. Even at this center of gravity where it's a little admittedly kind of picky, it just excels. Let's put it into a true loaded roll. Look at the way that butt slid around that, that turn. You could really see it against the clouds. You gotta fly this thing with a light touch at the center of gravity. I can show you guys the CG after the flight, but in terms of performance between these two, like I can take this thing up and immediately flip it over like that. And it flies almost like it's got thrust vectoring. It's insane. High alpha performance, uh, this is one of the best high alpha models out there. Most Delta jets tend to be very good right? like at, at doing high alpha. It's just the consequence of it being a flying kite. It's not a fighter jet anymore. It's just a kite with a motor attached to it. It's so mostly stable. I got it kind of stalled there into the wind. There we go. Throttle back. There we go. Look at it go. Start holding the nose back a little bit more. We're going to fly it right by Tony's face.
really not hard to do at all. We're not going to get a ton of flight time out of this 4400 pack. We're going to be flying both jets on very similar packs though. This one will get a LiPo 4500 SMC and it's starting out its flights on this 4400. Good God. High Alpha some more. Now the Eurofighter actually sequenced the landing gear to be a bit more performant. So it actually doesn't take 10 hours to cycle. There we go, getting a little too off kilter there. God, it's such a good jet. There's just so many cool things you can do with it. Let's go try to put it up into inverted high alpha because I need to do that with the Eurofighter at its new center of gravity too. And go up nice and high to do this because we got plenty of clouds to work with. I don't want to get too crazy with it. Full stick, pegging it up elevator right now. Down elevator rather. Let the nose down, there we go. Do some landings with it real quick. We're gonna do two flights on each plane, give you guys an example of what to expect. Actually, let's pull the gear up and then drop him as we come in to land. That's more fun. Look at the high alpha you can get with this thing. Admittedly, I will say that the uh, Eurofighter is a better landing jet, maybe because it's a little heavier. So it has a little bit uh, more of a presence. It kind of cuts through the turbulence. Uh, there is a very light wind out here. It's why I chose to do this today. Most of the clouds kind of help too. Four minutes of flight, what's our level? Good God, such a good jet. Let's do a minimum radius turn to landing. Not a whole lot of jets you can do that with. I know I can't do that with Eurofighter. Look at that go. Super cool. I did actually put the mix, or not the mix, but the canard setup that I use on Eurofighter. Because of the tail heavier center of gravity, I'll show you guys real quick. Um, we're gonna go ahead and bobble the plane up and down. Look at how the canards move. See how they move much more than the Elevons do. Makes it a bit more pitch responsive. Let's cut it here. We're gonna go get Eurofighter up and we'll show you guys what that one can do compared to this one. We wanted the way to do the comparison between the Eurofighter and the Fall once I had the Eurofighter set up the same way as Rafal. I finally got a channel expander to expand my 10 channel receiver into a 14 channel receiver. So I'm running the afterburner into the expander so I can turn it off when I do reverse thrust. And I have the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the gear door is sequenced through it too. So check this out. I can actually sequence this whole thing. The gear delay in total is like 15 seconds versus the 30 seconds one direction. There we go. Look at that go. This is all sequenced inside of my receiver. It doesn't take anywhere near as long as the stock one does. I keep uh, fat footing it. Much better, isn't that? So much easier to to actually get this thing up and around. So let's go ahead and get to the point. Eurofighter is being flown just like Rafal. Uh, got this, the uh, canard mix from my, uh, what do you call it? Uh, really fun, so that the canards move up a little bit more than they do on the elevator. Uh, mostly because the, uh, I can't do this with Rafal because the canards don't move as much. Eurofighter they do, and also use it for uh, braking as well, which is super cool. Uh, let's go ahead and get it ready. Get the call outs going and get her on up and we'll show you guys the difference between these two jets. There we go. Looking at the wrong thing there. So we're flying both of these jets on 4400 packs in the beginning here. The Rafal will be flown on a, what do you want to call that? A 4500 LiPo from SMC and this, and the, this one will be flown on the other 4400. A little bit more agile than it was. Look at it go through the sky. Not as good as Rafal. It's not flipping through the sky like Rafal, but it does load it rolls better than Rafal. Watch this. Look at how good that loaded roll is. You cannot get loaded rolls like that, like you can on, uh, just Rafal can't do it. So that's one of those things that it just is not very good at. But Eurofighter excels in those sweet loaded rolls. They're so good. 
It also does really good high alpha too. Let's bring it nice and close to Tony. Hold it up. Not a whole lot of effort required to do this here. Let it go. We got some wind too, it'll slow down even more. It just crawls through the sky. And throttle right out of it, look at it go. We're trying to throttle manage here so I don't run out of the battery as fast, but because it's a 90, it's gonna chew through power a little bit faster. So we can see how good it can do regular high alpha. Let's see how good it does inverted high alpha. We haven't even tried that yet since the maiden day. Um, they're both different jets that handle differently, although similar. The, I will say Eurofighter feels more planted in the sky. We're full pegged up elevator right now. Very sensitive rudder. This is not much of an inverted high alpha. I think we're fall winds here for sure. It's not bad though, it's just not as good. A little bit more stable coming out of it though, I'll tell you that. Uh, I have had instances like the best jet of 2022 video where I nearly lost Rafal, but because it's so agile coming out of that, it wasn't hard to recover from, it's just weird. Now, between the two, I don't even try doing knife edge with Rafal because it can't. It does not hold knife edge. Now, Eurofighter does. The missile rails, uh, according to my friend Alejandro, act like side force generators. So let's throttle up. Eurofighter is very agile. It just unfortunately can't do some of the stuff that I can do with Rafal, which doesn't suck. It's just a different jet with a different set of expectations for it. But look how fast those gear come out now on that sequencer. RC light systems makes an amazing expander system for these jets. I'm gonna set up the Freewing F-22 with the same expander to do something similar to get full control over every control surface on the jet. All right, let's bring her in for a quick touch and go. Oh yeah, we got those nice pollen, uh, what do I call it, uh, pollen vortices. God, I love this jet. This is actually really good. If I can get the center of gravity to be a little further back, I think it'll be perfect. Like it's not really, it's not bad where it's at. It's just not as agile as Rafal. But now that I got that expander, man, I just want to make the gear go up and down all the time because I don't have to wait 10 years for it to drop. We're going to go ahead and uh, line her up for the pattern here. We've flown three minutes, 44 seconds, according to my flight uh, timer. Dropping the brake, bringing her in. It actually does land better with the brake, surprisingly. Uh, at least it feels like it stabilizes a bit more. I think it acts like kind of like an extra vertical stabilizer rather than as a true air brake. Uh, I'm not looking forward to cleaning the pollen out of that jet. Now, ground handling isn't bad in terms of comparing it to Rafal either. In terms of that, it's pretty good. It's still, you know, it's still pretty, pretty good. I mean, it just doesn't turn as fast as Rafal does. Rafal turns like it's on a carrier deck. Like Rafal just literally turns like on a dime. This one does not. It's still really good. Let's go ahead and bring it back to Rafal and then we'll change it out. We're on a 4500 lithium polymer SMC pack. We don't have enough 4400s to share between both jets, so we're gonna use the 4500, which is actually one of the better jet, jet, one of the better batteries to fly this jet on, is what I meant to say. All right, here we go. Freaking get up, would you? Yeesh. They wanna use all that battery power just trying to rotate. This battery pack is probably one of the best ones to fly on, aside from the 44. Look at the way it flips. Now, if I could get that Eurofighter to do what I just did now, I'd love it even more. I mean, I love both of these jets. Don't get me wrong, but this jet can't load it roll the way that Eurofighter can. It load it rolls really well, but not as good as Eurofighter, and that's okay. Not everything's gonna be perfect. They do have distinct flight characteristics. And that's part of what makes them so cool to fly. You think that because they're both flying triangles, AKA death Doritos, they'd be both identical, but they're not. They both have very distinct flying characteristics. Here's what I'm thinking about the uh, knife edge too. 
doesn't really hold knife edge at all. It's kind of lackluster, to be honest. Let's take it up nice and high. We're gonna do a Cobra maneuver with it, something you cannot do with Eurofighter currently. Three, two, one. Look at that, not perfect, but you know, it's much more of a Cobra than Eurofighter could possibly pull off. Let's do it again. Gotta get a little bit more airspeed, I think. Three, two, one. The recovery is weird. It's not perfect, but the plane can kind of do it. But I love doing those full loops. It, it almost does a flip within the fuselage length. I love dropping the gear randomly too. Let's put it into a nice high alpha pass right over the deck. Again, show you guys some more of the similarities between these two jets. They're both solid jets. One of the main advantages you're gonna get with Rafal is it's a lot cheaper than Eurofighter. It's also available right now, whereas like, I think Eurofighter hasn't quite made its way all the way over to the US yet. Blowing around the, the, the plants. Got a little close to the ground on that one. Started to slide and depart laterally on me. That's okay, you know, I'm not really worried about it anymore. I've had so much fun with this jet. If I have to rebuild it, I will. I just want to push it to its absolute limits and just enjoy it. And this is all stock. Um, the uh, Eurofighter is not though. I did fly, I did fly Eurofighter on HS80, or sorry, D85 MG Elevon servos. Otherwise, you know, the plane is pretty stock. They're both very similar. Bring it in. Uh, I will say, again, landing this jet is a little harder than Eurofighter. right to make it look like that. It's not as easy to land as Eurofighter is. Definitely don't want to fly this jet off grass. You're going to tear up the retracks easily. You can do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Let's put it into a tail slide. So agile the way it comes out of that. Going vertical. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that, man? What was that? That was awesome was what that was. Do it again. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna break it though. Three, two, one. We'll do that again. I love doing those like instant climbs like that. That's not a Cobra, that's just like a quick wall. That's a 3D maneuver to do with a jet is insane. Here we go, three, two, one. All right, we gotta bring this bugger down. Dropping the gear. I don't want to burn up this pack. It's one of my favorite SMC packs and they don't make it anymore. Uh, the 4400s are good too, but the 4500 is so lightweight. Get into high alpha close to the ground. Look at that thing go. All right, we're gonna take Eurofighter up and then we're gonna give you guys the lowdown, my opinion between the two jets. You can see they're both very capable jets. There's nothing wrong with either one of them. Whatever one you go with is gonna be a solid choice. I will say that Eurofighter really hauls some serious butt into the sky and I didn't even have to use full throttle. So it does take off a bit easier than Rafal does. And it does, it's so cool looking. Look at those loaded rolls. It's just, it's a very agile plane. It just can't beat Rafal for the, the enclosed area you can fly it in. I am trying to put it into a minimum radius turn. I haven't done that yet. The min radius turn is about 100 feet wide. So it's not bad, but Rafal can do it in 50. So that's something to be concerned with. The lighting on Eurofighter is way better. Lighting is way better on this jet. Landing gear actually way better. Uh, in terms of aerobatic performance though, it's just hard to beat Rafal. The flying yellow banana death Dorito is just, it's a better jet in terms of agility. In terms of overall stability, Eurofighter is actually a pretty good jet. Pegging the stick back, see what I mean? You just can't flat backflip it the way you can with, with uh, Rafal, and that's okay, you know? It's a different jet. Maybe it would do that if the CG was further back. Maybe it would do it if they had had full span elevons like they're supposed to. Let's do a quick, quick landing. Whoa, whoa, baby, back over here. I'm using gear-based rates, so I don't have full rates when I'm when I got the wheels down. Nope, gonna go around. 
There we go. We'll just get it lined up and then we'll drop the wheels right as we land. How about that? In three, two, one. I love the vortices coming from all the pollen. We're in the, firmly in the middle of spring here in North Carolina, even if it's not truly spring just yet. Use some rudder to kick the nose around. Here we go. And the, the vortices coming off of the off the jets when they fly is so cool. It's a tail slider. It actually tail slides better than Rafal does, so it does have that going forward. If you like to take your planes up and drop them out of the sky, it's a good plane to do it with. So glad to have Tony back on the channel for today. Uh, he's really good at catching these planes. He knows what the plane's gonna do. So when he sees the plane rolling in a certain direction, he's, he knows which direction I'm gonna go and he can keep up with it. It's so cool. Check this out. More high alpha passes right in front of the camera. You want a high alpha jet though. I think Rafal actually doesn't do high alpha as well. I think the uh, the vertical stabilizer doesn't get blanked out as easy as it does. Uh, so you can go a little higher on your angle of attack. This thing is insanely aggressive. Let's get it nice and low. There we go. You can see it's actually pretty agile at the center of gravity with a little bit of the weight that I put into the tail. If you guys watched the final review that we did, uh, you can see it's definitely flying better. It's just not as agile as Rafal is, and then that's okay. We are currently at three minutes, 42 seconds of flight. We did actually fly the crap out of this jet, dropping the gear, bringing the air brake out. I'm gonna try to go for a slow approach this time around without dropping the plane into the ground. Leave the gear out. Got another high alpha pass, even though I didn't want one. Trying not to burn this battery pack up. This is one of my best ones, my 4400 pack. I need to order more of these from Danny uh, for these free wing and, and FMS jets to get the most juice out of them. Definitely gonna keep flying these packs. Air brake coming in. Yeah, the air brake actually does stabilize it. I'm kind of loath to take it out. I think I'm probably gonna leave it in because it does make the landings a little easier with some wind. Uh, that's something Rafal doesn't have going for it. So that's another thing too. Look at that. All right. So let's give you guys the lowdown on these two jets. The differences between Rafal and Eurofighter. Well, we're about to find out. The differences between Rafal and Eurofighter so far, they're both canarded jets, but the main difference between them in terms of canards, Eurofighter's canards move way more than Rafal's canards. This is due to a, in my opinion, poor canard design choice by FMS. I hope they make a V2 of this where the canards can move as much as they should. They do have the ability to physically move very far, but the, there's a little U-shaped horn connecting to the canards that are here, and then they're inside this little like U-shaped thing uh, below the battery tray and that can only move so far with a servo. So, kind of not the best design decision. I do like how uh, Freewing did it with the Eurofighter. There are two uh, servos up front that control these on little arms. They can go all the way down. Very, 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 very low. You can use them as effective air brakes on touchdown, which is awesome. You can't do that with, uh, with Rafal. The uh, other major difference between these two, Rafal, to its credit, has full span elevons, which means it can backflip over itself. It can do Cobra maneuvers. It can do other stuff that's pitch related with more authority. And because you can get the center of gravity further back on Rafal without adding tail weight, like I had to do with Eurofighter, Rafal flies better on the pitch axis. Where the uh, Eurofighter is better is actually in roll. It's more stable in roll. Um, Rafal isn't bad. They're both pretty similar, but this is more stable overall. The air brake is missing on Rafal. I don't think it even has, does it have an air brake, do you think? 
full scale. So yeah, there's no, no full scale air brake to speak of. So that's a clear win here, but that's additional weight and complexity to be concerned with. It also comes with better armament. That's another thing to, to notice. The gear struts are out of this world good on Eurofighter. They're a completely different class in and of themselves. You can't even compare them to Rafal because they're just that much better. Like, this is like the Cadillac of, well, let's put it in airplane terms. This is like the Cirrus of landing struts, like gear struts. This is more like, what's a crappy brand of, uh, of airplane? Nothing off the top of your head. It, it, it just, it, they don't compare. What? Ah, okay. Um, so yeah, missing the full span elevons for sure. However, the hinge quality on both of these is very similar, uh, except for the fact that the rudder on this one is gapless and this one it is not. Um, but the uh, elevons on the Rafale are completely gapless. The um, intake design uses fewer cheater holes on Eurofighter. There's a couple on the bottom and in these intakes on top, actually uh, they're pressure activated. So they pop open only as needed on Rafal, they're always open. Not that's really a big deal. It's just something to notice with between the two of them. There's more battery space. You can move the batteries further back inside of Rafal. You can push one all the way to the back here. Like, check this out. Let me move this out of the way. This is where it, the most biggest difference is. If you take the, the components out of it, the, the fr uh, FMS components, you can shove a battery as far back as you want to go and make it as tail heavy as you want it to be. On Eurofighter, you can't do that. There's a battery tray or there's a, there's a tray here for the support on the landing gear. You cannot move it any further back than it currently is unless you take the air brake out. So that is a major negative with Eurofighter. And that's why I had to resort to adding weight to the jet. Now you watch it fly in the sky, you wouldn't think that it's got that, but it does. It's 28 grams of weight in the tail. Not a real deal killer. I could go back a little further and push the weights even further back. Or I could, you know, do what some other people do and put like heavier nozzles on it or something. But I think in terms of what I got, I got them both flying really good. Solid choice between them. You can't go wrong going with either one of these jets. It's not a competition between them. It's just a, a clear fact. This one does fly better. It is more agile if you've set it up the way I've set it up. I think we'll even include a setup guide in this to show you guys how I did that. It's not hard. Uh, all you got to do is pull the boards out. I can't show you how to do that because I took them out a long time ago. You just unscrew them from the inside and that's it. The mixing and everything on Rafal is super simple. Um, if you bypass the board, you just run everything to the controller on your receiver. You have no problem at all getting it set up. The uh, Eurofighter, you guys already saw the setup bid for that. Pretty, pretty uh, more complex setup. It's not as easy to run the stuff because it uses those uh, ribbon cables. I did show you guys how to bypass that if you want to get yours to fly like mine. Uh, the sequenced gear, uh, it's a little too complex to show you guys how to do that. You just need to get an rclightsystems.com channel expander. Plug that in there, you're good to go. You can set it up and you have 14 channels instead of 10 if you're running an AR10360T like me. These both are using the same receiver, by the way, 10360T. Um, if I had to choose between them, honestly, I can't. I love the way both of them fly, but in different ways. I like how agile this one is and being able to do those low level <laughs> moves where you can hear the airflow break over the wings. It's just, there's nothing else like it. I do like the way this lands and takes off in comparison. I like the way it slides through the air when it's doing rolls and stuff. There's just no comparison that I can really fairly say that I would pick either one over the other. I would pick them for doing different things is what I would say. So they're almost evenly matched, but in terms of pure agility, Rafal wins out. In terms of scale appearance and overall flight characteristics, Eurofighter wins out for sure. Thanks for watching. See you guys again next time.